quest for a championship. And by the end of the night, after four games, we will be down to 10 remaining. That's a big hit. He draws this one. What a shot from Ben Robinson. Let me show you what it's all about. Strike three call. It's a combined no hitter. Welcome to the Little League World Series on ESPN, presented by T Mobile. Down at Volunteer Stadium, the first game of the day. This is the winner's bracket. It's Michigan, Taylor North Little League against Texas. Wiley Little League in Abilene in the Hank Aaron bracket to inch even closer to the ultimate prize. Boy, yesterday was a special day here in Williamsport with the MLB Little League Classic. The Angels and Indians arrive. Big leaguers and little leaguers sharing this great baseball town with some robberies included from Oscar Mercado. So ping pong, Framil Reyes had the cornhole going with some of the little leaguers from the teams still here in Williamsport. Ladder golf, always a hit. And you can't come here to Lavity Stadium without going down the hill. Might need a boost as well for Bradley Zimmer. Kurt Suzuki got to meet Team Hawaii. And of course, everyone wanted to see Shohei Otani dishing out the prized autographs, much like Mike Trout here in town as well with some selfies and then displaying the prizes and the new lids. Before the bad weather came, we had a three hour and 15 minute weather delay. So a lot more mud than the green grass out on the hill. And after a while, everything did clear for the main event, the MLB Little League Classic across the way here in Williamsport at historic Bowman Field and all the players and coaches and family members from all 16 teams Got to head over to watch the Angels and the Indians. You get another look at Trout, fellow countrymen hanging out. And yeah, that'll make it onto the Instagram story. Shohei Otani, one of the main events of this whole wonderful spectacle. So with all that, we say hello and thanks for joining us once again alongside Jessica Mendoza, Xavier Scruggs, Mike Monaco with you. Sebastian Salazar joins us in a moment. And guys, nice of the weather to clear up in time for that last night. Oh my gosh, it was the first time I got to be a fan at that game. I had my two boys on my lap and it was cool to see the boys and girls within feet, inches of the big leaguers. Yeah, I had an amazing time. I just sat back, had some popcorn, watched the game. <laughs> But I was thinking about how cool it was for Team Ohio, Team California, right there getting to see the same players they get to watch on TV every day. Well, how cool is it for us in this game here to watch Texas and Ella Bruning? Ella Bruning, I mean, obviously she's gotten so many storylines. You see what she did in game one to be able to help get the win. She's actually not even known for her offense. It's the defense, but she had two hits. In fact, only the third girl to have multi-hits at the Little League World Series, but watch her in this game behind the dish. No pass balls, 10 blocks in that game one in the most important position here at the Little League World Series to catch her. And she's been so humble throughout all of this as well. She knows she's got her team behind her supporting her. And Texas goes up against Michigan X, and they got some good vibes going early. Oh, yeah, they got amazing vibes. And Team Michigan, you think about it, they had great pitching, but it's the lineup for me, too. 12 hits in game one. Four of those players had multi-hit games. And look, they just keep it loose. They have a great time jumping jacks. They're staying athletic, keeping themselves up. And you know what? This team is going to show us exactly why they're one of the top ones in this division here, this tournament. All right, for more on Michigan, let's say hello to the fourth member of our team, Sebastian Salazar. Guys, I got Max LaForest of Team Michigan here with me. Big game today, Max. But I got to ask you first about the big leaguers last night. What was it like watching a big league game here in Williamsport? It was pretty cool. Yeah, just pretty cool? Nah, it was really cool. <laughs> yeah, we got the, uh, I got to meet Christian McKenzie, uh, Fred Mal Reyes, uh, Jose Ramirez. Wow. Them. Did they say yeah. anything interesting? What'd they tell you? Nah, I was just talking to Tristan McKenzie a lot. He gave me a couple uh, bubble gums and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. Trading bubble gum with big leaguers. That's pretty sweet. Did you get any souvenirs, balls, shirts? What'd you get? I got a ball. A ball? A sign ball? Uh-huh. Man. Oh, yeah. No, it was not a sign ball, but... I got my jersey signed. You got your jersey signed by who? Uh, Mackenzie. My man, you made out like a bandit. I know. And yeah. you guys were sitting right on top of the Indians' dugout. That must have been mm -hmm. super cool. Yeah, it was really cool. You ever been that close to a big leaguer? 
Mm -mm. Nah. All right, let's talk about today's game. Now, yesterday, you had a three-hour rain delay. What in the world do you do during a three-hour rain delay? Um, my phone died, and I had nothing to do, <laughs> so I just went in the bullpen and just kept throwing the ball at the wall. Yeah, that's pretty much what I did. I heard you guys pumping some tunes back there. Uh, What's on the playlist? Um, They were picking the songs. I didn't really pick any. Okay. Yeah. Okay, very, very cool. What's the key for you guys to get the win today? Um, Jump on them in the first inning, get their pitch count up. Sounds like a plan, Max. Good luck. Thank you. Spoken like a coach, Max LaForest. They're going up against Wiley Little League in Texas. The Little League World Series rolls on right after this. The Little League World Series on ESPN is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. Just about set to get the day started, and Abilene, Texas is serving as the road team. The hub of the big country. It's about three hours west of Dallas. The first Little League team from District 5 back in Texas to win the state tournament. And let's meet the kids from Wiley Little League. My name is Stetson Newman, and my favorite emoji is the sunglasses. My name is Ella Bruning, and my favorite dessert is cheesecake. My name is Golden Scholes, and my favorite baseball player is Manny Machado. My name is Dylan Brunning, and my favorite food is Chinese. My name is Brody Martin, and my favorite actor is Kevin Hart. My name is Kaysen Parrish, and my favorite band is ACDC. My name is Blaze Ruffin, and my favorite athlete is Michael Jordan. My name is Carter Nelson, and my favorite team is the Texas Rangers. My name is Landry Pate, and my favorite actor is Kevin Hart. My name is Major De Los Santos, and my favorite season is winter. Hi, my name is Miles McCarty, and my favorite band is Casting Crowns. My name is Dylan Regala, and my favorite emoji is the wink emoji. My name is Jackson Rissen, and my favorite food is spaghetti. My name is Carson Martin, my favorite team is the Texas Rangers. So that's Abilene, Texas. They've had to wait around since Friday when they started their stay here with a 6-0 win over Washington up at Lamadie Stadium. And they face the Michigan starting pitcher, Jackson Serba, the 12-year-old right-hander who his favorite athlete, Shohei Otani, was here yesterday. Not to be mistaken with Big Worm, this is Big Serm. <laughs> have a big task today navigating that lineup of Texas. About 24 hours after this game was supposed to be played yesterday before the bad weather that we told you about, we do get started with strike one, the Kaysen Parrish, the pitcher today for Texas. Behind nothing and two. He loves to hunt, loves to fish, and he can play all over the field. He takes ball one. Sermon deals, and it's two balls and two strikes. Guys, both these teams, they've had to wait around since they played their first game. It's been a few days for them. Yeah, I mean, they should be refreshed and ready to go. Recovery's big these days. Take advantage. Harris strikes out. There's one gone to start the ball game. X, how are you feeling? Refreshed after uh, getting the night off? Super refreshed. I took a nap yesterday at one point. Also, Jeez. got about 10 hours of sleep, so. Whoa. Oh my gosh. I might be yelling in this thing. He's going to be a 12 year old today. <laughs> there's some big swings. Watch, watch your ears. Swinging from the rafters. We did see some huge swings in the games we did have yesterday. We'll see if we get more of those. This is a guy who had a couple of home runs in regionals. Dylan Regalo for Texas. He's their center fielder. and won the count. So he had a couple homers in regionals, but he said the highlight of his season was before even getting to regionals, he had 10 home runs this season. That's saying something. I mean, you know, you always got to add in the Asterix Little League, right? A couple are going to be in the park, like maybe get someone between someone's legs and you just keep going. But you know, some legit over the fence. Regala works the walk here with one out. We go down to Sebastian. 
Hey guys, he's about, they've been waiting a long time to play this game. You're not lying. We had that three hour rain delay yesterday. So the Texas kids, man, they were having fun. Coach Bruni, he was leading the way, conducting fake interviews with the kids. I'm told the, <laughs> the questions were much more hard hitting than, than anything I asked all week. We had some bowling with Gatorade cups. That was until the dugouts flooded. Like that's how hard it was coming down. The kids from Michigan, on the other hand, I think restless is probably the right and the only word. I was down there for literally like a minute. I think three or four different kids in that minute popped their head and asked the coaches if there was any type of weather update. You got to remember, this team from Michigan going back to the end of the regionals, they've only played once in the last nine, ten days. And they're playing here and they're in some danger here in the first as Carter Nelson strokes the single into left. And Texas has him at the corners here in the first. Check out this swing by Carter Nelson here. He gets a fastball on the inner third, gets his hands inside. Great follow through, lines it into left field. And now you're looking at first and third with wristed up to bat opportunity for him to do damage and get an RBI as well. First pitch swinging on a line to center and Jacob Furcus makes the catch. A sack fly and Texas strikes first. And on the overthrow, Nelson advances. They'll give him two bases. Yeah, that, nice job of Regala over there at third base. He made sure that the line drive was caught first before he tagged. A lot of times, 11, 12-year-old, you'll get that quick reaction to start running home thinking it's a base hit, but he stayed there at third base, made sure he tagged up, and then got himself home. I love Furkus. I mean, that ball was smoked. He came in a step and then had that moment where it was like, oh, no. Good athletic move to make the grab. Coming Furkus's way again off the bat of Landry Pate. And whoa, these Texas bats came ready. Hey, it's all right. Tate just caught something off the end of the bat. He was able to place it softly into the outfield, taking advantage of another runner in scoring position just by putting it in play, not trying to do too much there. Well, we're going to get a pinch hitter here in Ella Bruning's spot in the lineup. Carson Martin will bat with two outs here in the first as it gets some rain coming down. Coach Bruning might be doing some more interviews. Hopefully not. A wave and a miss, one and one. Carson wants to be a pro fisherman. Spent a lot of time during the pandemic fishing. Really coming down and Sermon deals and misses two and two. Framer in this Little League World Series. We're going to talk about Ella Bruning and the blocking on the flip side, but Cam Thorning behind the plate. I mean, he gets down on a knee. Ground ball to short. Lucas Farner takes it himself to end the inning. Texas, a long wait for them to get back in action, and they strike for two at the top of the first inning in Williamsburg. Never what you want to see on a baseball or softball diamond. The tarp coming out after we just played one half inning here in the first game of the day after two games got pushed back yesterday after a delay of more than three hours. And we had just gotten started. The bats were here for Texas. Michigan was coming up for the first time. Some heavy rain coming down. Well, I love the bats getting going because this is my first time on this field. And all I heard about it was it's a no hit field. Like there's just no hits, no <laughs> offense. That's what happens. And so I show up and I see the bats come to life. You're welcome. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of how we do. X has been calling for it for I've like for three it. days, Jess. <laughs> so we know who the, the real good hitter all is needed, because you brought it. All we needed was for Justin. Wow. <laughs> Wait, was that a <laughs> shot? Oh, Shots oh, yeah, fired. Yeah, we're Absolutely. just day, minute one. We're already battling. Well, 
Certainly a shout out to the grounds crew. Uh, yes. Tarp poles are tough. They are never fun, and it's really coming down as we welcome you up here to the broadcast booth. The, the great hitters, Jess, X, Mike, with you up here. Oh, no. Sebastian Salazar. <laughs> is, you can great still hitters. be great. We're just going to be great together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We got a rain delay. Yeah. Hopefully it's short. Yeah, what do you guys do during rain? You've had you've had a couple of them. A lot of snacks. That's, <laughs> yes. that's we, had, <laughs> we had KP over there. Anyone that knows him, we were playing cards and gambling. So I don't know. <laughs> I showed up with, at your guys' candy. booth. And gambling you had a, with candy. Sounds about right. You had a card <laughs> trick for me right when I showed <laughs> yes, up to the booth last right. night. That's right. I learned a that was me. I'm learning magic tricks. So, wow. but it's cool. I mean, Sebastian was talking earlier what the teams do because that's huge. You remember being 12 years old? You got to stay focused. You see this kind of rain knowing that yesterday you got delayed a whole day, but more than likely you're coming out and playing today. Yeah, absolutely. But how focused can you stay if you're 11 and 12 year old in the dugout, right? There's that That's when you need that one clown on the team to just keep you entertained, keep it loose, whatever he's got to do, right? Were you, you that, pick, uh, no, was, what did you I was do? Not that you were person. not the clown? I was not that clown. I was the one that was locked in. Like, okay. nobody, hey, stay away from me. I'm going to be locked in over here. <laughs> Like out in the corner. Just, just kidding. I'm doing jumping jacks. Okay. I'm doing the worm in there. <laughs> I'm blowing bubbles with Wait, it on somebody's hat. You were doing the worm? Yeah. I was oh, doing the worm. Okay. So we've already had a worm off. We need to get Julie <laughs> Foudy, who also does the worm. If we could do a worm off between Julie <laughs> Foudy, be Xavier Scrub, I mean, I'm in. I was the one running out there on the tarp, too. Yeah. Or helping the tarp. Looks like they need some help right now, too. X, have you they gone down the hill muscles. yet? I have not gone down the hill this yet. This would be a good time. It's I feel fun. like this will be a little slick. That's that's the fun. That's, that's the, <laughs> have you already done it? <laughs> Not multiple times this so. year, but yeah, I've done it in the rain. I've done it in the mud. I've done it when it's dry. It's it's fun. It's a must. And if you don't do it, like yeah. then you just you can't come back. Well, me and Mike both haven't done it. So if we're doing we're doing it together, Ooh, I'm not doing it by look, myself. Look how that turned. I like you both on the same cardboard going down. I think that would be amazing. <laughs> on the same one. <laughs> yes. There's no way. <laughs> this is called peer pressure. Like uh, one, one behind the other, like you do like a jet ski. <laughs> we didn't get to completely tarp the field. That's what I was saying. Somebody, they needed some players out there helping them. Tarp holes are serious business, no, especially coming up in the minors. Goodness, I still. All right, well, let's check out the bracket because this is a game right now in the Hank Aaron side of things. Again, both these teams have played just the one game so far. They were both victorious already. As you see, Michigan took down Florida on Friday. Texas also a win on Friday, blanking Sammamish Washington. And so the setup of this is you win this game, you need just one more win to advance to the Hank Aaron championship game. That would mean you're in the final four. Again, all United States teams this year. And so if you win on Wednesday or you lose Wednesday, you win Thursday and you are there in the bracket championship game. Well, as we talked about, we've seen a couple of no hitters. Some of the top performers so far in Williamsport. How about Gavin Weir of South Dakota? 15 strikeouts of the 17 outs that he got. Eli Jones got all 18 outs without a hit. A no-no for him for Sammamish Washington. X used to swing it like this in Little League. Grant Hayes, two tanks yesterday in a win for Torrance, California. And in this game here, the second game for Ella Bruning, who has already announced her presence here in Williamsport. And Jess, I know you were excited to get a chance to call her game, and you were looking to find her and meet her, too. Yeah, I got a chance to go down there. And, you know, I, I talked earlier, and she's gotten a lot of attention because of the hits that she got. It's what she does behind the plate. And I don't think you can find a more important position than catcher here because of how much base runners can get, take advantage of a pass ball, a wild pitch. And so I went down there, I got to see her catch. So I got to talk to her while she was during the craft. And I'm telling you, I mean, she was blocking, but I mean, she was honed in. This is, this is bullpen. Like this isn't even like we're in the game. And afterwards I said, what's your favorite part about catching? And she was like, I love getting around the ball and absolutely blocking and knowing that that's what I do best. Like she knew it, she knew what she did well. It's so cool to see what she has done back there. She hitched a little bit, the hits, which weren't even supposed to be the, the best part of her game by her own admission. She's been really fun to watch. Well, it just talked about the focus, right? And I think that's one of the things that surprised me most about the kids here is they all have extreme focus on their position out there on the field, but then also swinging the bat. And then when we get a look inside the dugout, they're all following along. They're all watching what's going on out there. And I remember being that being one of the things that separated a lot of the better players from some of the other ones is always being focused on what's going on out there on the field. That way, when you get a chance to get out there, you know already ahead of time, you're prepared what's out, what's out there for you. You get this coming off the big leagues. Like, 
I feel like there's such a lesson to be learned with what you talked about being focused and yet the next minute they've got the smiles, they're having fun, they're doing the jumping jacks and the worm, the combination of this game at this level and that's what talking to Mike Trout last night, he said, I miss being 12 and I need to bring that back into the game that we're playing now. Yeah, it's something that was on display throughout the day yesterday all over the place when the big leaguers were here at, at these two venues and then of course in the Little League Classic at night as well and you guys were talking about your experiences watching that just a really special day overall to see how it all combines together yeah and, and just touched on it too is that that perspective as a player just coming back and seeing the little league players and then them going back out there and playing that's got to change their perspective on things mike trout mentioned that's how you play the game like you're a little leaguer enjoying the time that you have because you never know when it's going to be gone you know it, it, injuries come in this game you just never know so the opportunity for them to see their those big league guys the guys that they look up to those kids seeing them face to face getting to talk to them getting to touch them all those things man i thought that was so special to see it was, it was cool too because i don't think anyone epitomizes more what is done at the little league level than shohei otani and mike trout reminded us that because we got we had to ask him about shohei and he said okay when was the last time since you were 12 years old playing in Little League that the pitcher comes up, he hits the home run, he goes to right field, he comes back to pitch. Like, this is the level it happens. It stops somewhere along the way, but not for Shohei Otani. And so to be able to be there last night, I had my kids with me, and I was like, they were trying to ask me, oh, mom, can we get pop? I'm like, Shohei's coming out the bat. We just pause. It's like moment of silence. Like, let's watch history right now and watch him take his bats. Yeah, it was a special day. He is a spectacle, one man himself. Uh, the two teams who were here as well, they were so great with the kids, and it's been fun. So we are currently in a delay here. You see Texas leads Michigan before the bottom of the first. It is clearing up. The amateur meteorology will be right back to Williamsport after this. to Williamsport, Pennsylvania for the Little League Baseball World Series where thankfully the bad weather is behind us. The sun is shining. We got a ton of baseball on the way that we will get to over the course of the afternoon and evening. The crowd is excited. The players are dying to get out there. We've got Texas and Michigan in the winner's bracket in a game that is already underway. Texas leads 2-0 in the top of the first. So we'll tell you how we got to this point in a game that started more than three and a half hours ago. Carter Nelson had a knockout of the three spot for Abilene, Texas. So there were two aboard against Michigan. And Jackson Riston had a sack fly to center. Texas made it one nothing. They moved up on the overthrow. And then Landry Pate floated one into center. And that made it two nothing in favor of Texas. And then right before Michigan was coming up for the bottom of the first, it really started coming down. And it was all hands on deck for the tarp pull. Yeah, flex on him. That's Texas assistant coach Brian Bruning. We had everyone helping out. We've got Xavier Scruggs, Jessica Mendoza, Mike Bonico back with you. Sebastian Salazar joins us in a moment. And guys, back to baseball. Let's go. Oh my gosh. First of all, we got offense early. I heard this is the no hitter ballpark, but we got the bats going. Michigan has yet to hit and I hear they can really swing them. I told you guys the bats were coming. I told you guys <laughs> from the jump, but I'm excited to see Ella Bruning do her thing behind yes. the dish as well. Yeah, yes. it's no doubt a really good matchup that we were so excited about out of the gates here. And this Michigan team, they've had to sit around and wait. Ella Bruning has had to wait to get behind the plate, but she certainly is one of the main attractions for this game and for this tournament, especially Jess, after the way she asserted herself in their first game. She got their first hit. She's only the third girl to get multi-hits here at the Little League World Series, but it's what she does behind the plate that really brings the attention. She is catching. Her battery mate is Kaysen Parrish, also in the leadoff spot for Texas, who batted a few hours ago in the top of the first. Now he toes the slab. Michigan batting for the first time with Lucas Farner. And we're back underway. Officially, nearly a three hour and 19 minute rain delay. That's up high from Parrish. Comes the 1 1. This is lined sharply in the center. Lucas Farner stayed ready, and he's got a leadoff single for Michigan. One of the 
things I love about these Michigan hitters. How close they get to the batter's box, or how close they get to the plate. They get their toes up on the line. We saw that was a big reason they got their big hit. They kind of crowd the pitcher, kind of daring them, try to get into the kitchen. This is Gavin Eulin now, the second baseman for Michigan, and he chops one left side. Carter Nelson still gets the force. There's one down. That's a nice job of Nelson just sticking with that ground ball, knowing he has time to get rid of it and throw it to second base. He didn't get out of control, made a nice transfer over to second. Check this out here. He's in the ready position. Gets to his left, stays with that ball, even though it came out of his glove a little bit. Solid throw over to second base, right to, Sky right to Skiles. All right, it brings up Cameron Thorning, the catcher for Michigan. And Jess, I know you've been excited to watch this guy hit in the couple of games Michigan's had. Well, I mean, you get so many different body types at the age of 12. I mean, he is already so strong, and the way that he swings the bat, that left-handed swing, and he's got a stance super similar to Cody Bellinger. He gets in that batter's box. He's got his hands low, his whole entire setup. Chops this one left side in the hole in the left for a base hit. Eulin to second, and Michigan has come out swinging. So watch how close his feet are together. Remember, most hitters are going to get wide, they're going to get separate, but look how close and low his hands are. I mean, and Cody will get down into that slot position, and then they get into this perfect, powerful, same slot as you'll see with any other hitter. Super strong and powerful. He's got some Cody in him. You can tell, too, even with his swing, maybe not as on balance as he sometimes is, and still the strength yep, to the hit power. that hard. So two on for Jackson Surma, who back when this game began at one o'clock, the starting pitcher for Michigan and now batting for the first time out of the cleanup spot. X told you earlier the nickname Big Serm for Jackson. Takes high. And Jess was talking about that that slot that you get the barrel into and how that helps thorning. That's one thing as a hitter, you always trying to get into that slot to where you stay the barrel through a long period of time. That's one of the reasons why you might bring those hands down a little bit. The big Serm wanted to go out and get this one. I mean, he almost gets it on the hop. You see a bounce, he's going down. The bat actually hits the ground for the swing and miss. Nearly cricket style there from Serma with Ella Bruning blocking everything back there. All right, it brings up Jacob Furcus. He's the center fielder for Michigan. How did he spend the pandemic at the height of it? Well, he just grew seven inches, that's all. Seven inches. I was say, did you ever have a surge like that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Comes the 1 1. This one gets away and goes to the backstop oh, as finger, both finger, runners finger. move up 60. Watch the, watch the plate, watch the plate, watch the plate, watch the plate, watch the plate. That was a tough one there, Ella. You know, got a good job of getting her body in front of that, but that ball bounced and hit off of her arm. I mean, just tells you how tough the position is to try to get yourself ready to block something like that. She's been busy back there here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, you see the position that she gets in. She's already starting kind of with her leg down, moving her feet over, and you see that ball had so much movement as soon as it hit the ground and it bounced off her arm. That's why I couldn't play that position. <laughs> you get hurt way too much back there. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, Ella tried to frame it up on the edge through the back door from Parrish, and instead it's a full count. Payoff pitch on the way. Perkins chops it foul. 
the confidence of these pitchers to go to that off speed yeah. full count. That's one thing that impressed me so much that they have the command of all their pitches. Doesn't matter the situation. Runners on second and third, full count, they'll go to it at any time. Oh, oh, start off the game. Here's my breaker. <laughs> That's low, and they are loaded now for Michigan. How hard was it for you guys when you were growing up and developing as hitters to see spin, to see change in velocity? It's almost impossible when you were younger. I mean, my dad always tell me, pick up the seams. You'll be able to see where it's spinning. I would look at him like, are you crazy? I'm lucky to see the ball, period. Let alone find the seams, see what direction they're spinning. Noah Boren rolls it to first. Jackson Riston takes it to the bag. And Parrish is out of trouble. He sidesteps danger in the bottom of the first, and Texas leads after all. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the... I don't know. Buy me some peanuts and... Cracker Jacks. And I never come back, so I thought... Root, root for the home team. I don't want to sing the rest. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey, catch all the excitement from the Little League Baseball World Series Tournament and visit the first ever virtual fan zone experience. Visit littleleague.org slash fan zone. How many times, truthfully, have you guys done an Asad da, 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 and then hear the words? <laughs> Let me just, all the time. <laughs> love it. I don't know. I just said the, 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 the home team. <laughs> Some loyal fans. They had to wait around during the three plus hour rain delay. We go to the second. Texas leads Michigan. This is a winner's bracket game in the Hank Aaron bracket. Eight teams on that side to begin. Eight on the Tom Sieber side to begin. We've got 12 still remaining. As Miles McCarty, the shortstop for this Abilene Texas team leads off. Miles has quite the family ties in the sport of baseball. His uncle is all-star catcher James McCann. Now in his first year with the Mets, after a couple really good years with the White Sox, including being an AL all-star in 19. Two and two from Jackson Surma. Jackson deals. Full count. Cam Thorning back behind the plate for Michigan. And a leadoff walk for Texas to start the second. Nice job of McCarty there being patient. Working the deep count. Understanding that getting guys on base is going to be the most important thing now to continue to put that pressure on Michigan. With McCarty seeing a pitcher who, again, he started this game, faced six batters in the top of the first, and then he's off his feet for a few hours before he comes back onto the hill. And one thing that can be tough here too, Jess, you know this, the shadows yeah, yeah. here. Sun to shadow out of the hand. It's a bright white ball, and you kind of lose it halfway through. And where that line is right now is exactly where you decide, am I going to swing or am I not? Right. And I explained it to Mike, too. Is you're batting. It's almost like somebody shut off the light right in the middle of you <laughs> seeing the ball and then trying to pick it back up. From in there, right? You seem like you're down right now because you gave up a walk, right? It's baseball, right? Let's battle back. Let's do what we have to do, OK? All right, very good. All right, let's go. Hey, hit the zone here, hit the zone here, let's go. Hey, give me a ground ball, sir. That's Michigan manager Rick Thorning, the 41-year-old known as Coach Rick. He's a corrections officer. You don't want to mess with him, and he's got a message about body language there for young Jackson Surma, one of the really talented arms on this Michigan team. And I love it. I love that because that was the perfect message. You saw the body language, the frustration. He believes the coach strike one blows a bite. 
Three straight three ball counts here for Surma. He's facing Stetson Newman, the right fielder for Texas out of the eighth spot. Back-to-back -back walks. And I think Coach Rick Thorning also, you know, coming out there to the mound, understanding, hey, the one thing that we don't want to do is beat up ourselves, right? We don't want to give freebies away. So trying to limit the walks, limit the balls, that's going to be important for Surma to do while he's on the mound now. For a Michigan team that shut out Florida on Friday, and now Colton Skiles advances the runners as Max LaForest records the out. Skiles, great job of just getting the barrel out early. You know, not trying to be surprised with his butt. He knows it's a sack butt, trying to move the runners, gets it out early, keeps it out there in front, and lays down the perfect butt to move the runners. Back to the top now for Kaysen Parrish. He takes ball one upstairs. Loves his John Cena. Comes the 1-0. Roped into center field and on a hop to Furcus. McCarty makes it 3-0. Texas in front. Check out my man's swing right here. He loads, heads straight down on the baseball, barrel through it, right back where it came from, up the middle, gets himself an RBI, but more importantly, tacks on another run. But a nice job in center field by Furcus getting the ball in immediately. And Michigan's going to make a change. So two runs in the first for Texas. After the long delay, Texas adds another here in the second against Michigan. Back here in Williamsport, we remind you how this is assembled. The Hank Aaron bracket, both these teams, Michigan and Texas, on this side of the bracket. The winner of this game will need just one more win to advance to the Hank Aaron championship game. And you see the setup. Hawaii is 2-0 after a wild finish to a game, yes. Jess, that you originally were on the call for yesterday <laughs> against Nebraska. Did the hand off to you? You brought it in extras? <laughs> I'm sure the crew loved it. Gavin Eulin is the new pitcher for Michigan. He's got the side hustle yep. of lawn care service, and he's got the mullet, too. Wait, side note, though. Grandpa didn't get to make the trip because that side hustle business needed to continue, so Grandpa's got to stay home mow lawns. <laughs> Mom, Dad, Grandma got to come. No, Grandpa, sorry. If I'm going to do this business, you got to stay home and make me some money. <laughs> Gavin's got some gas, too. It does. And the side hustle is important when you're about 11, 12 years old. Oh, get yeah. you a little extra change. Things like 35 bucks a lawn. <laughs> That's some serious dough for 12. Dylan Regala lifts this one to right center. And Chauncey Atkins makes the catch. The throw to the place. Nice. Oh. Not in time. Newman scores despite the best efforts of Atkins. I love how Atkins here got behind the baseball on the throw. Did a great job of giving himself an opportunity to try to throw out Newman at home. You see the strong arm, but Newman just gets in there under the tag of Thorning. It's a close one there. Really close on the sack fly from Dylan Regala and out of the three spot for Carter Nelson. Showed you Carter had a single his first time back in the top of the first. And that's a strike on the edge. These teams both couldn't have been a whole lot more impressive their first games back on Friday. Two one on the way. This is hit hard, left center field, and Nelson's got his second knock. Parrish stops at third, and Texas threatening for more.
put down quick hands through the baseball. I mean, you talk about teams that can swing it. We've seen it from Texas. This is a team that continues to put hard contact on the baseball. They're barreling up. Even that last sack price fly to right field, they're barreling ba balls up. Third hit already in Williamsport for Carter Nelson in front of the cleanup man, Jackson Riston. Drove in a run to get all the scoring started for Texas back in the first. Newlin trying to limit the damage. Two balls and a strike. Love the deep breath from Riston in the box. Swings through the off speed. That's the pitch right there. Gavin Newlin, I saw him earlier in this tournament. When he can get that off speed in there, Tugs this one and Parrish scores to make it 5 0. Look, this Michigan team has been dynamite over the last few rounds. You go back to the start of the state tournament and including their debut on Friday, they've won 11 games in a row. Outscored their opponent, opponents 96 to 9. I mean, 96 runs they put up. And that's what's so hard about here is because they haven't failed very much, once they start to, sometimes it can really, you see the shoulders go down, the frustration set in early. X, how do you reset as a young athlete? Yeah, I, I think for Michigan, it's more about understanding how much time, there's so much time left in this game. And, you know, knowing how much you've scored in the past, you have the bats to come back from a game like this. Now it's just about taking a breath, especially on the mound. Take a deep breath, take a minute. Try to get back to work, th just throwing strikes. It's a good start from Gavin Eulin. And, and you don't think too, like, okay, let's try to get all these runs back at once, you know, or try to get all these outs at once. Just one pitch at a time. Try to keep the pressure off yourself. The left fielder Landry Pate out of the five spot for Texas had the RBI single to center his first time, and that is a nice breaking ball. That's that pitch Jess was talking about. When he throws it for a strike, he's going to make the the batter's knees buckle a little bit because that thing has some serious movement. I'm liking Eulen's leg kick as well. Yeah. Yes, and wait, if he takes off that hat at all, he's got a mullet he's rocking as well. Pate pops this one up. Max LaForest hangs on to it right on the pole. Texas adds three more, and after an inning and a half, it's 5 nothing over Michigan. My name is Gavin Newland. What are you into? Are you a big music guy? No, I cut, a I cut lawns in my spare time. You cut lawns in your spare time? I use a 30-inch walk behind Toro Time Cutter, a uh, Time Master. I got 10 lawns a week for about $35 to $40 a lawn. I like that cash. Welcome back to the Little League. Welcome back to the Little League World Series. That's our guy Gavin Eulen of Team Michigan. I would say his lawn services company is a little bit more than just a side hustle, guys. For his Christmas present this year, the only thing he wanted was a lawnmower, not just any lawnmower, a 30-inch walk behind Toro Time Master, okay? He also asked for a snowblower. He got both. Gavin, he even has a business card, the title owner slash entrepreneur. Guys, I've been at ESPN five years. I still don't have a business card. My man, as you mentioned, does not work alone. We got grandpa back home mowing laws while he's here in Williamsport. He even hires out to some of his friends, so he's already outsourcing, Gavin, a true entrepreneur. It sounds like the business is expanding. Oh, yeah. By the day. 
I mean, he has a card that he's, I'm surprised not handing out here. Like, come visit me and I'll mow your lawn. <laughs> Just like, Sounds like a corporation to me. way to make money. Ground ball and Carter Nelson from his knees does not throw out Ethan Van Bell, who will hold it first. To be clear, too, side hustle is what the kids say. I mean, that is exactly how <laughs> Gavin Eulin referred to it. Everybody's got a side hustle nowadays. I remember when I was that age, I was washing cars, going down to the neighbors. Hey, can I wash your car? Five, ten dollars, whatever I could do. Make what? some money, head to the snack shack after the game, be able to buy the extra bubble gum, be able to buy the Sour Patch Kids, the nachos. <laughs> Did you have deal? a business card? I didn't have a business card. I should have, though. Operating expenses were getting too high. First pitch swinging from Max LaForest right at Colton Skiles on the line. I love it. Colton Skiles, the reacts, going down to the knee. Oh, and this ball was smoked. Almost had a chance at a double tick play, too. Watch his highs follow this tail, too, to make the grab. These Michigan bats coming out, first pitch swinging here against Case and Parrish a lot here in the second. And I think that's got to be the focus, right? Continue to be aggressive. No, don't be passive here. Still be aggressive. Get your swings off. Put pressure on the defense. This one goes to the backstop. And Ethan Van Bell moves up 60. Couple of wild pitches as that one is charged as well to Parrish. Comes the 1-1. Chauncey Adkins could not hold up. You saw his nickname is Wheels. Coaching staff said this kid absolutely flies. Good stop by Bruning. We also saw he has an arm too in, yeah. in right field. Yes. Looks like he's a, a versatile athlete. We see he's another one of those hitters standing right on the line trying to get close as possible, take away that outside pitch. And he pulls it at Nelson. Two down. Where did you guys like to be in the box relative to on top of the plate, off the plate, that sort of thing? I was on the plate. In fact, Chauncey Atkins has my heart because once the line disappeared, we'll go ahead and air quote the line because he was definitely not in <laughs> within that space anymore. It is awesome to get in the head of a pitcher when you can crowd that plate and dare him to try to come in. Lucas Farner hanging over the plate, pulls it in the left. They will stop Van Bell over at third. And five of the last six Michigan batters have swung at the first pitch. Yeah, and I was like Lucas, too. I was out, you know, getting closer to the plate. A lot of outside pitches. But if somebody came in like this, I could get my hands inside, drop the barrel down through it. See how you got the backside? Look at the backside get through right there. And you just place it out there to left field. Nice line drive swing. So compact right there by Lucas Farner. And here comes the lawnmower. Gavin Eulin takes ball one, blocked by Bruning. It's a job, especially runner at third base. This is when it becomes critical. In Little League, we see so many runners. More run score on pass balls, wild pitches. And you've already been really impressed as Bruning got clipped on that one. Hopefully she's all right. starting to say both these catchers have been so impressive with their defensive work just in the first few innings. Oh my God, I also think about how much confidence it gives the pitcher. Mm, it looks like it might have hit right on top of that kneecap that's exposed a little bit right there. But the blocking skills, that's where I've been extremely impressed with a lot of these young players is the way they're able to move their body so quick behind the plate and then also save runs. Again, if you haven't been following the Little League World Series, this is Ella Bruning, one of the early stars, just the 20th girl ever to play here at the Little League Baseball World Series in Williamsport. 
She had a two-hit game in Texas's first ball game here during their stay over at Lamedy Stadium. And she said when the trainer came out, she wanted to stay in through tears, through crying, and right now they're just trying to make sure the kneecap, everything's okay, which so it looks like it is. They needed to get the shin guard off to check and say, hey, you might be okay. We gotta make sure the knee is still okay. It's probably just gonna be an awful bruise. Well, she just started playing catcher fairly recently. And she says she found out she was pretty good at it. So she liked it, stuck with it. And she loves being involved in every play back there. Yeah, just a year ago, she's like, I was a shortstop. I like shortstop, but there is not, her grin got so big, she got her braces on. She was like, but I just love catching. <laughs> you don't hear many people say that because of stuff like this. I mean, you get beat up behind the plate. We've already seen a wild pitch go off her forearm. Now a foul tip off the kneecap. But she wants to be back there. And the, the catching position is one of those positions that I tell all you players try to play because that is the one position where you see the whole field. And if you're trying to learn the game and you're trying to get better, one of the best ways is being able to see the whole field, play the catch position, learn how to maneuver swings when I call games and, and see guys swings and see, okay, guys or girls swings and see what do people do best? How do I combat that? I think that's one of the best ways to learn this game is being able to see that whole field and see what happens in certain situations. That's the best way to do it. I was a catcher until college. And I loved it and I was telling Ellen, we were laughing at it because we were saying like a lot of kids don't sign up. They sign up for it early because they think, oh, this will be fun. They get hit one time, okay, I'm done. <laughs> no one else goes behind the plate. But I, I was smiling with her because I'm like, I absolutely loved it. I, I tore my MCL, so they ended up moving me to the outfield in college. But there's something special about that viewpoint and the toughness it takes to play there. X, you spent time around guys like Yadier Molina, JT Real Muto. What stuff did you pick up just from watching them and the responsibility that a catcher has to what you're saying, seeing the whole game from yeah, back here? Exactly. It's not just the physical toughness, but the mental toughness. You know, learning every single hitter from the other side, right? They've got to know what every other hitter does well and what they don't do well, so they get a different vantage point of the game. Right on cue, she is darting to her right and blocking one in the dirt with a runner at third. Her fourth block of this game. She had 10 blocks. The last game. Let's make it five. And you said it earlier, the only one that got past her in the first game was well over her head. 3-1. Bounced in, and now they're loaded for Michigan. Down 5 nothing, but threatening with two outs here in the second. And look who's coming up. The very dangerous Cameron Thorning singled the opposite way his first stop. Parrish deals. This one gets knocked down, I believe. Clipped the home plate umpire back there and maybe saved the run. Mike, you talked about you know, how, how do we get back into this game if we're Michigan, right? Pitch by pitch. They're being very selective at the plate, understanding the strike zone, just worried about getting on base, not trying to do a lot. And you do all that in front of this guy who can make this a one-run game in a hurry. This is one kid that can make you pay right here. 2-0 to Thorning. And he blasts this one. Deep to right center. One run ball game. It's a granny for Thorning. You can just feel the energy and the emotion tip off right there as soon as he took this swing. Look at the leg kick down. High finish. He knows that ball is let loose right there. Check out my man's reaction right here. Let's go. Put four up on the board. Now they're only down one run. And he's still saying it, crossing home plate.
come here, come here, come here. We're still up in this. We're gonna win this inning. We're good. You're good. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You're pitching heck of a ball game. That's all right. You're good. Don't worry. Hey, let's play some baseball. All right, let's go, Miles. Here we go. Shut him down, dude. Here we go. You're good, Case. Case, get your head up. Let's go. Get him on the stick. Play your defense. Here we go. The second Grand Slam for a Michigan player at the Little League World Series in history. He almost felt like he was due, too. I've watched him throughout regionals early here in this tournament. He's had some knocks, but he's yet to get a hold of one the way that he just did. He skied some fly outs where he hit it about 100 feet into the air for a fly out. That one had to feel really good. Well, Jess had mentioned the comparison to Bellinger, you know, just the stance. But yeah. once I saw the swing hit deep to right out over the fence, I saw the finish. And that finish is like Bellinger's too. Up through it, two hands, finishing almost the barrel. The barrel, if you watch here, the barrel almost hits the back of his back, the way he gets through that baseball. And any, the one thing about him is, you know he's gonna make you pay if you leave something up in the zone with that swing. So powerful, so balanced. Didn't see him try to lunge and go get that ball. Just a big time swing right there. Jess, X, super interesting you're making this comparison to Cody Bellinger because you're not the first. He told me before the game he's been getting that for the last couple years since he really settled into this stance. Curious thing is, it's not one of those cases where Bellinger's his favorite player or anything. Favorite player is Bryce Harper, and actually Cameron says his stance was really developed while playing baseball on a Nintendo Wii. His dad is obviously the manager, Rick Thorning. He says they've worked to open the stance up a little bit over the last year or so, but with Cameron's ability at the plate, Coach and Dad, he don't want to mess with anything. It's obviously working. I mean, it was just a different sort of launch angle than what we've seen here in these first five days. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. I know that. <laughs> he's also a catcher too. I mean, that's that's what's been cool to see is him behind the plate. He he's not just a hitter thrown back there. Jackson Sermo, the batter, took strike two there for Miles McCarty, the new pitcher for Texas in what is a 5-4 game. And you guys promised offense. We've had it in two innings. A strikeout by McCarty. On in relief from short. He fans Serma, but we got a ball game on one swing that is separated by one run thanks to Cameron Thorny. Rooting, 20th girl in the Little League World Series history. Ella does it again. That's what she's got. Yeah. That's really cool. She's already got the third most hits by a female here at the Little League World Series. The record is four, and you shouldn't put that past Ella Bruning. And she said afterward, it's really cool. I had two hits considering I'm not really the best hitter. I'm not known for that. Definitely humble. Her life has changed over the last week. First pitch swinging to second. And Thorning makes the play. Now playing at second base after Yulin went into pitch. And there's one down. Good contact. Ella Bruning plays a little bit off the plate. We've seen a lot of hitters crowd, but she's off the plate, able to really get her barrel onto this one. And just a nice play defensively to get to this. I thought it was going up the middle. As soon as she hit it, I'm like, she's at hit number three. Records four, let's go. Credit Thorning ranging to his right, making a nice backhand play right there. That was smooth over there at second base. Batter now is Miles McCarty. Jess, I, I found it interesting what you said. Like, her life has changed in ways that you can't really imagine for a 12-year-old just in the last few weeks. Roller right side again. Here's Thorning. Two down. Well, I talked to her dad before the game first because I could tell she was a little, like, nervous, you know, and I didn't want to just go right up to her and be like, hey, I'm one more person that just wants to talk to you, be around you, just... So I was talking to her dad and he said, you know, yeah, it's been awesome, but it's also been really interesting for her because she wants to focus and play and honestly just be a part of this team. And there's just been a lot of personal attention. She's got two brothers. <laughs> she's been the one that's like usually kind of in the back seat, just roughing it up, whatever. She's not used to being singled out. And she's never once thought that
that it would be different to be a girl. And that was one of the coolest things talking to our teammates, is they're like, we don't really understand why this is any different. And that just made my day. Here's one of her brothers, too. Dylan Bruning, you saw Pops. Ryan's one of the assistants. Dylan got added to this team after a season-ending injury to one of their teammates. And so Dylan's the younger brother. They call him Pickle. He chops one foul. Pickle, that was one of those games in the backyard. Yes. Cold to sack. <laughs> you were always playing that one as a young player. You set up the two bags. You could, you could put a piece of papers down. Yeah, it, didn't it didn't matter what it was. But you could play that all day. And you could peg. Yes. <laughs> there are different rules. <laughs> Strike three called. Eulens pounding his chest. He's trying to fire up the crowd coming off the mound. Michigan's got some juice here in Williamsport. Welcome back to the Little League World Series on ESPN presented by T-Mobile. Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Took a lot of rain here over the last few hours. This was the first game to get going today. The second is underway up at Lavity Stadium, and we're going to get the next game on this field, the third game of the day going, about 45 or 50 minutes after this one wraps up. So they're going to stuff all four games in. We're going to have a lot of baseball here on ESPN and over on ESPN2 as well over the next few hours. Jacob Fergus leads off for Michigan, down by one to Texas in the third. Oh, one to Furcus, and he takes outside. I hate to correct everybody, guys, but you underreported Jacob Furcus's growth spurt over the pandemic. He started the pandemic at 5'2". He's 5'11 now, or at least when we asked for the height before the tournament. He may well be six feet now. Dad Ryan tells me he is now the tallest Furcus ever, and he wears that very proudly, though. Uh, definitely some tall jeans on Mom Jennifer's sides. What's the secret? Uh, lots of sleep over the pandemic and lots and lots of food. Mom and Dad tell me we're looking at <laughs> multiple dinners and then a supper most nights. I'm not sure the difference between dinner and supper, but we're getting three of them plus dessert. And it's all the staples of a well-rounded diet. Cheeseburgers, pizza, cereal, some veggies too. Uh, Mike, uh, you're not that tall. I'm not that tall. Kirchner's not that tall. I did ask if the Ferguses had like an extra room or something. Maybe we move in for a couple weeks. See if see if one of these growth spurts, you know, rubs off on us. I, I think the grocery bill is already big enough for Ryan and Jennifer there. <laughs> it sounds pretty ridiculous. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> hey, Farkas, with that growth spur, you start getting a little bit taller than Dad. That's when hey, some of you, somebody's trying to ground you. You start looking at him twice. Like you sure? Farkas in the center. Uh, what is it, by the way, guys? Dinner or supper for you? I mean, what is, dinner. What, what is 100%. Supper? Yeah, I was gonna say. What is that? I thought that was like 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> you read about in like a book like from history yeah <laughs> sit down for supper playing with the cardinals people were saying something about supper over there in the midwest jackson schufeld drops it down and mccarty gets the lead runner on the attempted sacrifice how's mccarty jumping off the mound i absolutely love first of all the reacts this is what you see in little league the pictures of the athletes they hit they pitch they play all the positions and in this case not only be able to get to this get rid of it quick solid throw down a second great play came in from short and then fields his spot for the first out and then delivers strike one to ethan van bell Off the end of the bat, Skiles retreats for out number two. Our second NFL preseason game is tonight, Urban Meyer and the Jaguars. They square off against Sean Payton and the Saints. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. Deportes and the app, one at one tap. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Lewis Riddick, and Lisa Salters with our coverage starting at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific with a special edition of Monday Night Countdown. Max LaForest rolls it to short, and just like that, Miles McCarty works around the leadoff single. We're through three in Williamsport. Thank you. Up the hill at Lavity Stadium here in Williamsport, Oregon and South Dakota have gotten underway the last few innings. They're scoreless, you see, in the top of the third. 
We play on to the fourth down here at Volunteer Stadium. Jessica Mendoza, Xavier Scruggs, Sebastian Salazar, Mike Monaco, our entire crew with you behind the scenes as well at this beautiful complex. And Ella's got the ice, but she powers on in this one. I love the fact that she just got right back in the next pitch. She blocked it, came in solid hit, almost for a base hit. He hit anyone besides Cam Thorny, who had just moved from behind the plate out to second base. That's where he's at now. Her teammate, Major De Los Santos, at the plate, taking a breaking ball from Gavin Eulin for strike one. Juanito wants to be an architect. He says, the special talent is drawing. One and two from Eulin. By the way, there's a, a sign up at Lamadie Stadium that one of the fans has. One more win means one less day of school for these kids this summer. A strikeout for Eulin, and there's one away here in the fourth. Guys, what is a run at the Little League World Series without a little bit of superstition? So let me tell you here about Wiley's. You see that hammer hanging right there in the fence? This team lives by one motto. There's only two things to do in baseball, either come back or hammer down. So you'll see the kids from Texas tap that hammer on the way out of the dugout. This hammer, by the way, very much a stand-in. At regionals, they were using an eight-pound sledgehammer. Obviously, a little <laughs> too heavy for the uh, flight to Williamsport, but so far, so good with the stand-in. And right now, very much hammer down time for the boys and girl from Abilene. <laughs> Eight to ten pound. I love it. Whose job is it to carry that one yeah, around? Exactly, right? <laughs> you can understand leaving it because you throw that in a carry on, you're over the 50 pound limit there. 100%. <laughs> They're going to be checking bags. Like, what is this thing? What are you trying to travel with? This theme from Wiley Little League in Abilene, Texas, the runner up out of the Southwest region. Two balls and a strike on Kaysen Parrish in the leadoff spot for Texas, and now three and one. And a five pitch walk. A one out base runner for Parrish out of the leadoff spot. Good job. Hey, one out here. Major's out. Be smart. Let's get two back right here. Let's get two back right here. All right, so Texas is thinking add two. Maybe do that on one swing from this guy, Dylan Regala, who has walked, scored, and driven in a run with a sack fly. Take strike one. Good block back there behind the plate by Van Bell. Yeah, nice job of Van Bell by just picking that you know, so quick with the hands right there. It's a tough one to get in front of, so he just picked it over there. Two one. Gavin Eulin's got a lot of energy, and a lot of swag out there. Check out the shoelaces. Aces, yes. This is hit hard to second. Thorning flips. Farner turns. It's two. I mean, can we just check out how Thorny got in front of this bullet right here by Regala? Goes over there, gets his body in front, centers it, perfect flip over to Farner. Farner with a nice throw to LaForest. That is a textbook 4-6-3 double play. We are off on the ESPN KidsCast. It is not wrong. 
I play a game called Clash Royale every day. Really? Both cowgirls representing our state. So many followers right now. What's your max bench? I don't think I've ever been pressed in my life. Kids are going to call the game. They're so excited to be they here. They should be excited. What an yeah, opportunity. So hey, the kids cast tomorrow. The second one for them, 730 Eastern, right here on ESPN. Shout out to Ian, Monet, Zoe, and Haley. Doing a great job, and what a cool opportunity for them. And they were nails. I know, X, you were tuned into them last night. Oh, man, I was loving the kid, because I went into the game, came back, turned on the game, was in the seventh or eighth inning listening. It's like, this is pretty good. Solid listening to what they were able to do. They were so excited. I mean, they, like, they got their own jerseys before the game. They were screaming. Like, are you kidding me? We get our own jerseys? And it was the same as the players on the field. I mean, just the opportunity. Pretty cool. Zoe, by the way, she's going to be with the three of us yes. on the Home Run Derby that airs next Sunday. And I shouldn't have been as surprised because they've been doing it longer than me or about the same <laughs> time. So <laughs> they're pretty good. Kali Harris is the batter here for Michigan. And Miles McCarty has a strikeout for the first out in the bottom of the fourth. Beautiful breaking ball. We've seen some good ones. Ulan on the reverse side. McCarty here. The swing and miss. This is some nasty break. Yeah, I was gonna say, X, you said it earlier. Like, I I don't think I've seen we've started to see him more. We had two years or last year off. Lucas the king Carter pitch rolls now. this one into center and a one-out single. I mean it's tough to to work with these breaking balls that they're seeing. <laughs> Well, especially that, the confidence, the, the, the way the pitchers are throwing them. Like, they throw them every other pitch if they want. Yeah, and these hitters, too, I, I think of how much better they were that they are than when I was that age. They're able to stay back, recognize it early. Gavin Eulin to third. Nelson and Skiles will pocket that. Two down. Guys throwing two-seamers, sinkers. This... Fastball's up in the zone. Like, they know how to command it so much better than I remember at that age. Yeah, who was it? Was it Eli Jones who was telling Sebastian about his two-seamer in particular? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty decent after you throw a new hitter. You know, I was rolling my four-seam with the two-seam. Mixed in the change and the slider. Actually, I was talking to McCarty before the game because he was in the bullpen, too. And he was talking about how he's going to mix in the slider a little more today. I was like, we have a slider? He's like, I just started to throw it a little bit recently and mix it in. <laughs> um, they're not going to give me anything good. They're going to stay the outside more than likely. They're going to come back inside to you, right? You go to the outside, take it to the outside, okay? Don't try to pull it. Let's go. Father and son sizing up the plan of attack, and this is why you got to stay away from Cam Thorne. Grand slam back in the second when it was 5 nothing before the swing and now 5-4 where we stand now. And how about this? We're talking about slider usage, two-seam usage, stuff you see in the big leagues. Texas is going left on left here against our guy Cameron Thorning. Bring out the bullpen. Matchups. We're playing matchups. Reggie Regal has been studying the splits. So they go to the pen. And they call on Brody Martin to come into this game and replace McCarty. And if you watch Martin warm up, he has a particular way about the way he delivers the baseball when practicing. He jumped back with his left foot and then deliver the pitch. Showing that the off speed's coming there. What, what was the toughest arm slot, X, for you to face from a guy? I mean, that three quarter arm slot from a righty, right on right, especially they got a good two seamer, which is sinking back to a right handed hitter. And then that slider, if they got a good slider too, so that sinker slider combination, especially from a hard throwing reliever, that is tough to hit. Brody's got a pretty big lid as well. That's, that's a big hat. 
It's because he's got some lettuce back there. You see, he's got, he's got a good little flow rocking. Seen a few awesome flows. Kids claim them too. I got the best hair on the team. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> They're not afraid to let you yeah, know. Yeah, they, they definitely <laughs> let you know. One of the big spots in this game in the bottom of the fourth, tying run on for Michigan and thorning at the plate, taking ball one from Martin. Nice block by Bruning behind the plate. Let's keep it in front. A lot of catchers think they got to catch the ball. No, 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 no. When it's in the dirt like that, you keep it in front, that runner's not going anywhere. one -oh pitch. Bruning reaches out to grab that one. Again, trying to stay away, just like Cameron's father, Michigan's manager, Rick, said they would. And it, it can be tough as a hitter, too, knowing that you might not see anything good, but still, you're, you want to be aggressive, you want to be ready, because you know you're one of the hottest hitters in the lineup. You want to do damage. So it's a tough, tough line to navigate there. Cameron was in a home run derby earlier this year down in Myrtle Beach. He hit 11 home runs in 60 seconds on a 250-foot fence. <laughs> Trying to send one into orbit there, and Chauncey Atkins, the pinch runner, is going to move up into scoring position. His nickname is Wheels. 2 2. Thorning off the end of the bat. Brody Martin hangs on to it and retires Thorning. That is a big out by Brody Martin on in relief. 5 4 Texas Let's go. after Let's go. four. Won that inning. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 5-4 Texas over Michigan. Jess, at the end of that last half inning, you had your ears tuned to Ella Bruning. Well, behind the plate, the catcher, one of their responsibilities, communicate to your defense. And in this case, to the pitcher, she was yelling exactly where to go to get that last out. And that's huge, because why? That ball was taken up the third. He thought about it. She yelled. Booth the other day, and I was starstruck. I was like, that, 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 that's what they did. I was juiced. You didn't ask for the selfie yet, but I, I know that's coming, X. You always got to get a selfie. Keep I my got, Instagram popping. <laughs> I didn't wait. It's so cool. Two total legends. Look at the smiles. I mean, that's what makes me happy. I love Bruning's just like, heck yeah. <laughs> She posted it on the IG. Monet's playing softball for Hampton University. She's still rocking it. Carter Nelson grounds it to short, and Lucas Farner on the backhand throws down Nelson by plenty. Do we have a time? No, I'm not sure. Oh, stumbled out of the box. Some smiles over there from the Texas coaching staff. Now first pitch swinging for Brody Martin, who reaches off the bubble. Yeah, Martin sharply hit that a second there to Thorning. Looked like he just misplayed it a little bit. We talked about, you know, centering yourself as an infielder. That's one thing that can be tough to do when you have a sharply hit ball. That ball just hit, I think, off his knee right there. Tough play. Thorning, a guy who's been playing a lot of catcher for Michigan this summer. I haven't seen him out in the field yet. He's been behind the plate. And by the way, he's a, he's a big kid. It's not easy to catch when you're big. I mean, Salvador Perez for the Kansas City Royals does a great job of trying to look small. And you're six foot plus. Create that target for your pitcher. Yeah, you were noting Thornton going down to the, the one knee approach that so many catchers are doing almost now. Almost like a half split. Like he had that leg way out so he could be little for his pitcher, that target. You see Ethan Van Bell do a good job of that behind the plate right now, framing up that last strike. 
2 2 to Landry Pate. Pops this one up, and LaForest with the basket catch. LaForest was chatting with Sebastian hours ago this morning when we were getting this game going, and he was a fun kid to listen to him chat. Hanging out with Tristan McKenzie a little bit. All these kids have so much personality, man, and it, it, it comes to this platform, this stage. It's so cool to see it. Great job centering there by Thorning on the hard ground ball from Carson Martin. Exactly what Xavier was talking about, and Thorning makes the play. We're in the fifth in Williamsport. after this game originally got started. We're in the bottom of the fifth after a three plus hour delay and boy, it's been a good one. Texas got the first five. Michigan the next four on the one swing from Cameron Thorning. And Ella Bruning is back behind the plate for Abilene, Texas in this one as well. Jess Mendoza, Xavier Scruggs, Sebastian Salazar, Mike Monaco, our entire crew with you on what has been a fun first game of the day here amid the rain in Williamsport. We ate pretty good, by the way, during the weather delay. Got to do the ballpark food. Well, I just went straight for the ice cream. I didn't really do lunch. <laughs> I was like the kids. <laughs> Don't tell my boys I did that. <laughs> Big Serm. Jackson Serma leads off and tugs it foul. I had been waiting to try the chicken fingers and fries. I kept hearing so much about chicken fingers and fries and then Went and had myself some ice cream as uh -oh. well. Uh-oh, uh-oh, they caught us. Oh, no, they caught us. Look at Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Joey Chestnut. <laughs> yeah, that was like his 12. <laughs> That's up high from Brody Martin. One one. That's up and away to the arm side. Cut and a miss. Two and two. Martin looks like he's got a little bit of tail action yeah. there on that fastball. Yep. On Maybe the left side. Tough on the lefties and the righties. Pulled into left field, and Michigan's got the tying run aboard here in the fifth. It looks like the changeup there, holding the changeup. Catches it out in front. Watch him all the way down the line. Look, who knows? That's big. Anytime the two strike hit, when you even if you get it off the end. Two you strike pat hit. yourself on the back. On the back. That's good. Clap on the way down. We've seen a lot of kids. Some air guitars are running. And now Jacob Ferkus rips one in the center field past Regala. Ferkus got in a collision at first. They will stop Serma over at third. See this is. This ball is laced to left center here. Just gets by Regala, but we got a little collision over at first base. He said, I'm so, Sanudman said, I'm so sorry. He didn't mean to get in the way there. Big swing from Jacob Ferkus to make it second and third for Michigan here in the bottom of the fifth.
And we'll get a pitching change here as well for Texas. They shuffle everything, including Stetson Newman, who had been over there at first and took the brunt of that. So Landry Pate will come in. And he will toe the slab for this Abilene, Texas team. X, you ever been run over like that playing first? No, I was usually the one, you know, if so, somebody coming hard, I, I'll give them the elbow. I'll get in the forearm shiver. <laughs> I'm not afraid to do that. Obstruction, what? I was going to say, <laughs> except it's on you. <laughs> and they got lucky there defensively because that is obstruction. They could have given them another base had there not been a, a runner in front of Vargas. Hey, let's go down to Sebastian. Guys, remember each team at the Little League World Series got 250 passes for family and friends. Well, for the team from Michigan, there were exactly zero leftovers. It's also a huge deal back home. First of all, uh, the Dick Sporting Goods in town started selling Taylor North Little League gear just a couple days ago. It's already flying off the shelves. We got tons of watch parties around town. The biggest at Big League Brews, a restaurant that has sponsored this team throughout their run. And how about this? This might be the coolest part at all. Hunter Dickinson. The All-American Center for the University of Michigan basketball team reached out to the manager, Rick Thorny, just the other day, asking for a pass, wondering if he could come to Michigan's next game. So if the little fellas from Michigan take care of business, who knows, uh, maybe the ultimate big man from Michigan could be in Williamsport later this week. Wow. That's really cool. The winner that? of this one is playing Wednesday night, and maybe we'll have a seven-footer in the crowd. Jackson Schufelt is the batter here for Michigan with runners at second and third and Michigan down a run. And you'll see the infield. We've got the corners in, looking to cut down the runner at home. If he gets the butt down, they're looking to stop that runner at third base and Sermon from coming home, check him, and then throw it to first base. 1-1 one, one pitch. Wave and a miss. Pate's bringing it. Deep pitching staff for Texas. They've got nine different players who have pitched this summer. That's outside. Jackson Shue felt the youngest player on Michigan's team on a 2-2. Good block by Bruning. She's been textbook back there. How many balls have we seen in the dirt? Runners in scoring position. Payoff pitch. Schufeld rolls it. Nelson to first. Runner coming home. It's a tie game. Ferkus rounds third. He's coming to the plate. And Michigan leads. Guys, I just want to highlight this here. Nelson, teaching moment. Always check the runner at third before you make that throw. Keep him at third. Get down, get down. And then that pass yes, ball yes, allows sir. for another runner to come in and score. But I just wanted you to understand, Nelson there has got to check the runner. Line drive at Brody Martin, two down. Get one more look here. Nelson feels this perfectly. But just no looking the third, the runner on third back. So he goes straight to first. The runner on third end has the opportunity to just go straight home. You look him back, so he starts taking a step back to third and can't score on a on a ball like that. And so after Texas got the first five in this game, Michigan the last six, and now lead for the first time. LaForest down nothing and two against Landry Pate, who deals. Jacob Fergus was blazing around the base paths. X, you're so right. These games come down to the small things. You know, as much as we love the big hits and the home run, the grand slam that we've seen. Sometimes it's just a, a simple look. Brody Martin gets in the center of it and retires LaForest. 
But the damage done, those little things add up to a big Yo. inning for Michigan and a lead for the first time as we go to the sixth in Williamsport. The Little League World Series on ESPN is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. Swing at the bat. That is when I've seen the most success of past the bat is when you get that aggressive mindset in these hitters, these young hitters. They want to hit. Miles McCarty, the son of a D1 head coach. His father Rick at Abilene Christian, representing the tying run for Stetson Newman. And he's not taking X. And now he knows, he, Newman knows one swing and turn this whole thing around. One, two. Stopped by Van Bell. Man, Van Bell is so good at picking it back there, backhanded right. it. Two, two on the way. This one goes all the way to the backstop. McCarty moves up, and now the tying run in scoring position. And honestly, two strikes. You're down by one run. You want to just be late. Hit something to the right side of the field. 3-2. And a strikeout for Eulin. And there's one down. Man, big pitch by Gavin Eulin right there. Third strikeout of the day. We see he climbs the ladder with that fastball. Just a tough pitch to try to time up if you're Newman. Brings up Colton Skiles, the second baseman for this Wiley Little League team out of Abilene, Texas. And ball one. One and one. Now here McCarthy at second base has to be super aggressive on a ball in the dirt. If he sees something just happen to trickle away, he's got to get to third. A base runner there, X, is looking for what? Yeah, base runner there is looking for a down angle on a pitch. That way he can get the jump early, get himself in scoring position, or get himself on third with less than two outs. And when I say down angle, I mean the ball, seeing the release point from the pitcher's hand, and if it's coming down too far to where you can tell it's not going to reach the plate, you can almost go ahead and, and run off of that, knowing that's going to hit the dirt. Tough for the catcher to throw you out at third. Ulins 2-2. Fouled back by Skiles. You see how every swing he gets more and more back in this at bat. It was take, swing and miss, foul ball, kind of weak fly ball, little weak ground ball. That one line drive, I'm on this. Kind of boosts your confidence, confidence within an at bat. The guy who is known for his glove. They say he's got the gold glove at second. He has come through with a huge hit this summer already for Texas to beat Fort Worth University. But Eulin's got a strikeout, and there's two down. You can follow the official Little League handles at Little League, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and join the conversation with the hashtag LLWS. So this gets interesting here at this point with the pitch count for Gavin Eulin in that plate appearance going over a threshold corresponding with a day of rest. Michigan will go to the bullpen with two outs in the top of the sixth inning one out away from a victory over Texas as these teams try to get to 2-0, and it's Cam Thorning 
And boy, as we welcome you up here to the booth with Jess X, Mike with you, Sebastian down in the stands, this game has been a thriller. Oh, I love it. I mean, first of all, Texas goes up two runs. We wait three hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> then we get a grand slam in the bottom of the, the second inning, and it has just been back and forth, and Texas still not giving up here. Yeah, they still have an opportunity here, runner on second base, and you see the pitch and change. So this is one of those moments where you know it's big, right? You got to be try to take the pressure off of yourself try to breathe and easier said than done with these 11 and 12 year olds oh my gosh yeah and cam thorning by the way who's into pitch right now was the hitter of that grand slam i have a, a closer like feeling from him he's the biggest kid on this michigan team yeah i feel like mike we're, we're coming he's coming in we're gonna see some gas yeah <laughs> i think so i think it's coming in what began as the first game of the day we still have another to follow 45 to 50 minutes after this thing wraps up here, that's Louisiana, that is Ohio in an elimination game. Cameron Thorning, his first pitch hits Kaysen Parrish. So you got time run on, and now you have go ahead run aboard huh? for Texas. Sure. We'll catch it. And maybe their best hitter coming to the plate. Yeah, interesting move there, trying to go to the changeup. We talked about how much right in, you know, blade, in these huh? situations they go to the off speed, but oh, yeah. just got away from him there and get another look. Here comes the changeup inside. Just missing the spot right under the shoulder blade. How about the hit by pitch bat flip? <laughs> I'll take that. And now Dylan Regala. Sebastian told you this team talks about hammered down. What do they have left with one out to play with? His favorite food, steak. We know what type of steak he's looking for right now. This ribeye base, base hit ribby. That's what he's looking for. There's the gas you were looking for from Thorning. 71 and Texas down to its final strike. And that is gas to win it for Michigan. Michigan comes from behind and tops Texas to get to 2-0. Yeah, Coming up next, it's Sports Center with L. Duncan.